Are you awake, Henry? Henry? Henry. All right, Henry, get up. None of that now. I know you're awake. I wish I was so positive about it. What time is it? Jensen, baby's crying. Must be seven o'clock. Goodness. Ten minutes fast. Seven o'clock, get up. Seven? It gives me 15 minutes more. Not on Monday morning, it doesn't. I don't know why, but it seems to take you so much longer to get ready on Monday morning. Well, Sunday night might have something to do with it. Henry Halavy, anyone would think you were a schoolboy with a week of school ahead of him. Let me tell you, the prospect of six consecutive days working at Martin's mail order house is nothing to look forward to either. All right, Henry, get up. Now, for heaven's sake, Myrtle, let me sleep. Wasted one out of my 15 minutes already. Listen, John McCready, I wasn't born yesterday. You got in at 3.30 this morning. I saw what? I don't have to take this from you. The best years of my life I've wasted. Oh, shut up. Shut up! That's the McCready's. It's 7.15. My clock was right, after all. I prefer to believe the Jensen baby. Don't be silly. The McCready's are much more reliable. They've started arguing at 7.15 on the dot for years. I still stick with the Jensen baby. No seven-month-old kid is going to lie about the time. Well, I give you one more minute. And if you're not up... All right, sleep your life away. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Bobby. What's the matter now? Your father. Oh, Mom, I wish just once when Pop did something you didn't like, you'd refer to him as my husband instead of your father. After all, he's your responsibility, too. Well, my husband and your father. It's going to take an earthquake to get him out of bed. I suppose it couldn't be just a tremor. It would have to be some shakes of an earthquake. Say, is that a pun? Oh, Bobby, this is no time for joking. This is your first day at Martin's, and your father got you the job. How's he going to look if he brings you in late? He's been bringing himself in late for 22 years. You can't expect me to change his life. Well, you better go in and threaten him with a glass of water again. All right, but I'm getting tired of this every morning. What we need is an automatic sprinkler over his bed. Coffee, some white toast, no butter, and a poached egg. And don't make the coffee too strong, or whatever you do, don't burn the toast. And be sure the egg is just right. If it's not, you'll have to take it back again and hurry. Morning, Willie. You know, what's good about it? Listen, Bobby, if a husband murders his wife, what's the penalty in the state? Same as any other, $50 or five days. It's worth it. Where's the bread knife? What's the matter now? Now, your sister, Flory, dreamt I was a millionaire last night. Now she wants breakfast in bed. That sounds reasonable enough. Yeah, but she didn't dream I was a chef. Maybe that was her own idea. Bobby! You sure it's cold enough? Oh, right out of the icebox. Good. You can go right on sleeping. I'm just standing here admiring you. Hello, Bobby. No. Your walk sounds just like your mother's. You better do something about it. Here's your water. Got the lemon. Here. I don't know why I have to drink this stuff. It settles your stomach. Who wants my stomach settled? I lead a dull enough life as it is. Mother thinks I throw this in your face every morning to wake you up. Ah. Well, let's keep up the illusion. Bobby. <laughs> Well, what can I do for you, Bobby? You can get up and get me down to Martin's on time for my first day of work. That's right. Monday. Why couldn't the Lord have rested two days instead of one? I'm not in a position to answer that question. How does the world look to you, Bobby? It'll live. Now, come on. My solution for the world is to stay in bed and ignore it. That's a fine solution. All right, Bobby. I'll give it another chance. Why don't you retire this old road? With what? Coupons or soap wrappers? Say, Bobby, do you think I can do without shaving? Oh, honey, it'll only take five minutes. Five minutes out of my life here, five minutes out of my life then. Who wants to bet I'm all out of place? <laughs> it isn't every girl who can have a crazy father. Is he up? Yes, and ringing wet. Mom, how do I look? Let me see. Willie, where's my breakfast? Just got to sprinkle some ground glass over the eggs. Willie, you oughtn't to talk like that first thing in the morning. Get Flory to lend you that little pin of hers. Oh, right. Morning, Flory. Can I borrow your pin for my collar? You mean my good one? 
The dollar and a quarter when Willie gave me for our anniversary? <laughs> the very same. You might lose it. It isn't insured. Well, seeing it's your first day at work, you can have it. It's over in the jewel box with the other safety pins. Oh, thanks. I don't care for that dress you're wearing. Well, I haven't cared for it for the past two years, but I suppose it'll have to do for a girl who's trying to earn a living. Earn a living? Do you mean to say you're going to work to earn a living? Well, I'm not donating my services to Martin's. Now, listen, little sister, you better come over here and sit down. I've got some things to tell you. Did you ever hear of that fine old American tradition of marrying the boss? There's another fine old American tradition that the boss already has a wife. Then if he has a wife, maybe he has a son. They make very good marrying, too. Oh, Flora. Now, don't tell me it's a career you're interested in, not marriage. Well, right now... You listen to your older sister. You don't want a career. A typewriter is a woman's natural enemy. You're 22. The years go by fast. First thing you know, you'll be 25. Second thing you know, you'll be an old maid in a public charge. Now, go to the closet and put on your slinkiest dress. Look, Flory, I'm not interested in the battle of the sexes. How can you call such one-sided slaughter a battle? Women only have one weapon, marriage. We marry the guys. That's how we get even with them. Here, Your Highness, and may I express the hope that your royal throat chokes on it? Willie really doesn't mean it. She's a royal liar, too. Willie means every word of it. I was under the impression I was marrying a girl who could cook her own breakfast. And I was under the impression that a man who ran a collection agency could afford a home of his own and a maid and a cook. It's my business to collect the bills, not run them up. That's a lost art with you, too. Laurie, I see what you mean about marriage. I must try it sometime. Don't do it. Come on, Bobby. We're going to be late. I'll get my jacket. Did you shave? Of course I shaved. But not with much enthusiasm. Still, says J.B. Martin shaves. Straighten up, Henry. I want to see if this sweater fits. Bobby, do you think if I told Ripley your mother's been working on this sweater since the day we were married, do you think he'd believe me? If he's married, he would. Oh, it fits perfectly, dear. Come on, Bobby. Yes, goodbye, Mom. Oh, goodbye, Bobby. Good luck. Good luck, Bobby. Bring home the bacon. I have to start running at this mailbox. There it is. What did I tell you? Come on, Bobby. Come on. Come on, we're going to miss it. Hi! Hi! It's the first time I missed that bus in 16 years, and it gets to the office just three minutes late. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I guess I slowed you up. Hope the conductor isn't worried about me. Tomorrow we start running from the newsstand. Yeah. Well, I bought your paper, gum, and I'll pay your fare. That's because it's your first day. After this, you're on your own. And it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah, I guess everything feels wonderful to you today. Well, why not? It's a beautiful day. Well, whatever it is, you won't see much of it from your desk. Now, only the unemployed can really enjoy a day like today. <laughs> what can we do to get fired? We can miss the next bus, too. <laughs> well, what's in the paper? Now, you read your own. Oh, I don't want to read anyway. I'm going to work. Aren't you excited about it? I feel awful about it. You do? Why? Well, Bobby... The minute you enter the store, I'm exposed. See, I've always been important to you because, in my mild way, I've been the lord of the manor, you know, the good provider. I've even given a few orders around the house. But your dad at Martin is another animal entirely. There are 20 bookkeepers, and 19 of them are wearing brand new eye shades. Your dad's wearing last year's. You know, I take orders from everybody except one office boy. And sometimes, after a little discussion, it winds up with me taking orders from him, too. Oh, I don't mind so much about that. But... Oh, Bobby, you're the only person I've ever wanted to impress. Now you're gonna find your dad's no glamour boy. Some people have more dignity taking orders than those giving them. There's the bus. Uh, yes, Mr. Norman. I want these invoices checked over. Do you think you could do it by yourself? Invoices, Mr. Norman. Invoices is my middle name. They've got to be out before lunch. Before lunch, it'll be. Very well. OPM. Uh, good morning. Oh, good morning. This is my daughter, Bobby. Bobby, this is Mr. Norman. How do you do? Glad to have you with us, Miss Holloway. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Norman will be your immediate boss. Well, thanks, Bien. See you later, Bobby. Now, Miss Holloway. You've been given this job on your father's recommendation. He's one of our most trusted employees. The rest is up to you. We demand punctuality, precision, and enthusiasm in your work. Miss Mills will run through your duties with you. Miss Mills, this is Miss Halliday. How do you do, I'm sure. Now, if there's anything you want to know, I'll be in my office. 
And remember, punctuality, precision, and, uh... Enthusiasm. Uh, and enthusiasm in your work. I'll try my best, sir. Very well. We'll see. He likes you. Are you sure? Of course. If he's gruff and yells at you, it means he likes you. If he's polite, then you can start worrying. Gee, if only I could get a harsh word out of him. Oh, well. Here's your desk over here. Come on. You can put your hat in the desk. It'll be all right. Nobody will bother it. Thanks. The girl that used this desk got married last week. Her name was Francis. Tell me, is the work very difficult? The work? Oh, no. If it took any brain for what I'd be doing here. What's your first name? Bobby. Mine's Gertrude. Bobby's a nice name. I like it. I never have. I'm looking for a man to marry who'll change my first name as well. I'm just looking for a man. I don't care what he changes. Now, take Francis. Mr. She... Norman said you'd show me what to do. Oh, it ain't much. We just check the orders with the bills of lading to see that they match. It ain't no fun. They always match. Is that all there is to it? That's all. I think I'll ask for a decrease in salary. Don't ask. You'll get it. Here, wade into this first batch of orders. And remember, enthusiasm. Rims Ross, and he never looks where he's going. Eccentric. I'll say. You can take it to the art department. Sorry. Sorry. This time I think he looked where he was going. Funny thing, though, he never seems to bump into me. Evidently a mishap. What happened? I don't know. Something went wrong. We dropped three floors. Take me easy now. Here. Let's carry him over to that bench there. That's right. Give us a room here. Get him a cup of water, Rims. All right. Here, Bobby, with this handkerchief. Take it easy, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, Joe. Thanks, Henry. How'd you feel? Oh, I'm all right, I suppose. Everything happens to us bookkeepers. Don't it, Henry? Didn't use your head, Joe. Got yourself bumped off. Your missus might have collected a pretty penny. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> You'll be all right, Joe. Come on, Rims. Let's get him down to the doctor. What happened, Mac? Shoes on the prony breaker worn through. Here are some orders in Spanish. At least I think it's Spanish. What do I do now? I'll call Norman. He'll send an interpreter. We do a big business in South America. Hello, Mr. Norman? Miss Hallaby has run into one of them Spanish orders. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you awfully, Mr. Norman. There'll be a Latin up in a minute. Oh, gee, a quarter to five. I think I gave the firm its money's worth. Aren't you going to finish that stack? Listen, tomorrow's another day. And tomorrow brings with it another stack of orders. Notwithstanding, I'm quitting now. Go break your head for the firm, and what do you get? Ulsters. Oh, it's been a hectic day, hasn't it, Mr. Rawson? Yes, it has. Honest, I'm a wet rag. A Latin. I'm going to the washroom. Pardon my frankness. If I don't hurry, I'll be washing on my own time. Oh, uh, Mr. Norman sent me down to check those Spanish orders. Oh, uh, here it is, Mr. Rawson. How did you know my name is Hallaby? How did you know mine? Well, I guess somebody told me. I suppose that's how I got my information, too. Well, won't you sit down? Oh, I'm used to standing. I, I've been on my feet all day. Well, I've been... <laughs> Go ahead, sit down. Well, <laughs> uh, thank you. Pardon my back. 
There's no Spanish blood in your family, is there, Mr. Ross? Oh, no. I used to live in a Spanish neighborhood, and the storekeepers would swear at me in Spanish, so little by little I picked up the language. I didn't have your opportunities. No one ever swore at me in anything but English. Uh, that's unfortunate. I hope to be speaking Italian soon. Oh, really? I live in an Italian neighborhood now, and I'm pretty unpopular. Uh, they check. Thanks very much. You're perfectly welcome. Uh, call me any time you wish. Thank you. Uh, don't mention it. We um, do a large South American trade. You sure you haven't got any more Spanish orders? I didn't run across them. Uh, sometimes they get stuck together. Oh, do they? They're not stuck today. Well, anyway, as I said before, we do a large South American business, so I'll be seeing you again, I hope. Oh, oh. thank you, pardon. Oh, it's a pleasure, I'm sure. That's the first time he bumped into me. Say, did you ever notice the bigger the firm, the more they skimp on paper towels? Come on, get your hat. You stay after five, it'll look bad for me. Come on. Oh, now I can relax. Ooh. Just a way for your father out here. We all come out of the same entrance. Oh. What do you do nights, mostly? Oh, a book, a movie, sometimes a concert in the park. Concerts. What kind of men can you meet there? Either they got hair down to their shoulder blades or no hair at all. I usually go for the music. Music. The wedding march? All right. There's a man mixed up in that. But the rest? Listen, I schedule my evening activities only where there are men in bunches. Say, come to think of it, the Martin Employee Social Club has a bowling party at the Midtown Casino. They have one every Monday night. Men, all shapes and sizes. Say, why don't you come along? Well, well thanks. I'd like to. It sounds like fun, but uh, I, I don't go in much for bowling. Who goes for the bowling? Catch wise. I don't go in for that either. Oh, no, no. Just innocent relaxation. A chance to ripen acquaintanceships. Great. Oh, great. That's Herbie Smith, a pest. He's crazy about me, but I'm aloof. He takes me home every night. I shouldn't let him, but it gives me satisfaction to know that I'm an expense to him. Come on. Hello, guy. Good evening, Mr. Smith. Gee, you look beautiful. I don't care what anybody says. I take that from whence it comes. Oh, where are my manners? Bobby, I want you to shake hands with Herbie Smith. With Rims, you've already had the pleasure. Herbie, this is Bobby Halliday. Any friend of Gates is a friend indeed. How is that? Very well put. Well, good night, Bobby, and try to get down to the bowling, huh? Oh, uh, you're coming, aren't you? Huh? Oh, oh yes, at 8.30. Well, good night. Oh, I'm glad to meet you. Uh, don't mention it. So long, Rim. Good night, Rim. See you tonight. Night, Bobby. Night. Oh, Miss Halliday, your father told me to tell you that he's working till 5.30. Oh. Oh, thanks. You're perfectly welcome. Well, good night. Uh, good night. Oh, Miss Halliday. Uh, pardon me, but uh, which way do you go home? Oh, the Fifth Avenue bus, the one that turns up the drive. Oh, that's the way I like to travel. Is it? Uh-huh. No crowds, and it's cleaner. Of course, it takes a little more time. Oh, you're absolutely right. Oh, uh, here, let me open that for you. A uh, little gadget I invented. You invent things? Well, uh, <laughs> sort of. Uh, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. This seems to be uh, one of the times that it doesn't. <laughs> Wouldn't it be simpler just to tear it with your fingers? It would, but this is the machine age. You're not allowed to be simple. Well, simple or not, I, I don't think you're going to sell many of these gadgets. Well, I admit at the moment it's commercially impractical. In fact, all my inventions are commercially impractical. Uh, the mechanical ones, that is. Say, did you ever see hemp turned into silk? No, no, I haven't gotten around to the World's Fair yet. Hmm, well... I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I have a few ideas of my own on that. Of course, the place to be is the Philippines, right where they grow the hemp. Right now, I'm angling for a job near there. Yeah, I have it now. You press your thumb there. See? How's that? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think we better go. Oh, there's my butt. Good night. Oh, 
Aren't you coming? No, this is the way I'd like to travel, but the West Side Express takes me right to my door. And besides, I have to get ready for bowling. Oh, <laughs> good night. Good night. trying to muscle in. I'm just trying to make Herbie jealous. <laughs> oh, Herbie, how's your foot? I think I should have an x-ray taken, huh? We'll all chip in for an operation. My goodness, all this fuss. Just because I happened to drop a ball on his toe. <laughs> but, Kate, I didn't say you did it on purpose. Well, I did do it on purpose. I planned it for a week. You're satisfied? You seem to take a great delight in eating my heart out. So I'm sadistic. So what? Come on. Good night, <laughs> kids. See you tomorrow. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Almost too perfect the way they paired off, isn't it? Oh, that's been going on since Noah's Ark. Care, okay, buddy? Um... Yeah, come along, didn't you? Uh-huh. Uh, me too. Rates are down this week. Uh, how do you go home from here? We're not near the bus line. Well, let's see. I can take the 8th or the 7th Avenue subway. A cab will take you right to your door. Well, uh, uh, that would be good for me. Do you mind if I came along? Why not at all? Let's take the 8th. I hear they're running at a loss. All and... right. <laughs> I'll get a cab. Yes, sir. You will not. Well, I'm sorry, buddy. So what'd you encourage me for? This would have been a great night for driving a car. Mm, an open car. Well, I had a car once, about seven years ago. No top, no running board, no cylinders, no nothing. <laughs> four of us boys in the neighborhood owned that car. We never bought more than four gallons of gas at a time. It made the bookkeeping easier. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Here it is. Had another car. I, uh... <laughs> well, all the talk's been about me. Well, what about you? Tell me about yourself. Well, to begin with, I'm 22. Well, your father told me 20. Oh, well, Dad always adds two years to Mother's age and takes two off mine. No, I'm 22, and, uh, and sometimes when I read, I wear glasses. You're a straightforward person. Will you be as honest when you're 30? Oh, oh no, sir, no, sir. By then, I'll be using Dad's arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 25. Well, it doesn't make any difference to the man. You know, you're a very honest person. You said that. Well, that's a miracle worth repeating. Well, you're one girl in a million. Well, thanks. Of course, I'm exaggerating. I hope so. But not much. Well, another thing about you, you're a very comfortable person to be with. Well, look at me. I'm perfectly relaxed. If it should so happen that I'd have holes in my socks, I wouldn't be ashamed to tell you because I know you'd understand. I, I think I would. Of course, it so happens that these are brand new socks. You know, I never thought of myself as being so honest, but, but it's a very nice compliment, especially coming from a man who's going to be famous someday. Me? Famous? Well, well sure, sure. When you, when you go to the Philippines and turn silk into hemp or, or hemp into silk. Say, did I tell you about that? Uh-huh, this afternoon. That's right. I tell everybody. Funny you should remember. Nobody else does. Well, after you do that, you'll be the famous Mr. Rawson. Will you like that? Oh, sure I would. I'm a full-time daydreamer myself, like everybody else. I like to picture myself walking into a hotel lobby and people pointing me out and recognizing me. You know something? Famous people get recognized in other places besides hotel lobbies. I know, but every time I picture myself being pointed out, it's always in a hotel lobby. I don't know why. I don't know why. I wonder if Florrie's listening upstairs. <laughs> uh, have you got the time? Uh, oh, sure. The minute hand's off, but I could tell by the shadows. <laughs> it's uh, 12.30. Well, thanks a lot for bringing me home. I'm just as honest as you are. I enjoy taking you home. Good night. Good night. Say, why not make my dropping by next Monday night a date? Well, uh, if it isn't too much trouble. We can take the seventh instead of the eighth for variety. Anything you say. We can switch off one week the seventh, the next the eighth. Fine. 
Good night. Good night. Say, that's a thought. Why not make my dropping by and picking you up a regular Monday night appointment? Sounds like a good idea to me. Then let's say tentatively I'll pick you up next Monday night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> well, why should it be tentative? Let's make it definite. All right, it's definite. Good night. Good night. speaking. Is Rims Rawson there? Oh, well, when did he leave? He was expected here an hour ago. W would you try his room? Maybe he's working on a new invention. How to vanish before he's handcuffed. <laughs> Willie! Coming, Simon, coming. What's at the movies? Well, Larkin's 165th Street, Carson City, and Why Mary. Do we have to go to the movies tonight? Well, what else is there to do on a Monday night? There's a concert. Of is Rims Rawson there? I'll call up and find out what time Carson City goes on. I wonder what railroad gets built in this one. Care to go to the movies, dear? Oh, thanks very much. Oh, uh, no, Mom, this is bowling night. Is Errol Flynn? Well, was the boy wander in? No, he's probably on the way over. He's entitled to be late one Monday night. I think he's entitled not to come at all. That's your line for the evening. Now, shut up. Yes, sir. You know, one thing about Rims I don't understand. Why does he only take you out Monday nights? Do you turn into a witch the other six nights of the week? Well, Saturday night he bays. All night? I don't know. I never watched him. He isn't a rich executive. But well, what about his inventions? Don't they pay off? I told you, they're commercially impractical. And, well, besides, he has his pride. A man in love has got no right to have any pride. And we'll do without that comment from you. Who says we're in love? We, we like each other a lot. Hasn't he said anything? Hasn't he dropped a hint? Maybe he has. I'm not very good at recognizing hints. Well, hasn't he ever acted? You know what I mean. No, he hasn't. Have you ever let him know how you feel about Laura, the Laura, you keep up this cross-examination. They'll be booming you for president. You've known each other quite a while now. You should have had him ready to propose. Why does he have to propose? I never proposed. I married. Listen, I went through all this for Florrie married you. See what you did? I called up. Carson City doesn't go on again until 10 minutes of 12. Oh, oh, we can all go to sleep and set the alarm for 11.30. Oh, must be rims. I wish you'd stop interrupting me when I'm trying to talk Hire to my sister. Hire a with you. You jabber and you talk. Hello, rims. Hello, hello. <laughs> Pardon me, but which way to the Philippines? The Philippines? Sure. Buenas noches, senorita. What are you talking about? Well, from now on, I'm speaking Spanish. You remember that job I told you about the Philippines? Well, it's come through. How do you like that? Oh, oh, oh that's wonderful. I'll say. Here's a six-page letter of resignation I've written to Martins. Half of it's in Spanish. Oh, <laughs> buenas noches, senoras y senores. Don't be surprised if your next silk petticoat is made out of hemp. Hemp, H-E-M-P. What's the matter with him? Oh, he's going to the Philippines. When do you leave? Oh, not for a couple of days yet. I have a lot of things to do. Tickets, clean shirts. Say, instead of going bowling, how about coming on a shopping spree with me tonight, huh? Oh, oh, no thanks, Rims. I, I was just telling the folks I, I have a headache. Yeah, we all got headaches. Oh, well, that's too bad. But I have to be at the photographer's in 15 minutes. But I'll see you before I leave. Say, I'm awfully sorry about the bowling well, tonight. Rims, uh, the Philippines is an awful lonely place for a single man to be. Huh? Yeah, uh, that's what I hear. Well, I'll, I'll get me a roommate. So long, folks. Oh, adios, senoras y senores. Adios, you sort of senor. Now you can come to the movies with us, dear. Oh, oh, no thanks, Mom. Believe it or not, I really have got a headache. That young lady needs some good advice. Just a minute, Florrie. As one movie goer to another, let's get going. Go on, Pop's right. Mind your own business, will you? Five bucks, we'd go out and get plastered.
I talk too much. Uh -huh. But I'm just trying to make it easier for you, dear. You're in love with rims, aren't you? No. Bobby, you are in love with him. I'm not in love with anybody who isn't in love with me. But he is. No, he isn't. If he was, he was... Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Only I do wish you'd leave me alone. Bobby, I'm telling you, you're going about this thing in the wrong way. Roy, will you do me a favor and mind your own business? Let him go. I'm not mad about it. Well, you're such a sap. If I had another sister, I'd disown you. Have the least idea what it's all about. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, this is Rims Rawson speaking. Hello. Mr. Rawson. Yes, she is. I don't know. I... I think she's taking a bath. Who is it? Just a moment. It's that guy you aren't mad about. Rims? Why didn't you tell me? You let me talk to him. Quiet. Hello. Why, she's in the tub, and I hate to... Yes, she is going out. Florrie. No, I'm afraid it isn't your farewell party. She has a date with someone else. You fibber. Uh, this not being Monday night, you understand. I'm pretty sure it's the rainbow room. You <laughs> give me that phone. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, Bobby. Well, your sister said you were taking a bath. Yes, yes, I was, but I heard the phone. Well, aren't you coming to the party? Oh, of course I'm coming to the party. No, I haven't any engagement. It's just that infernal sister of mine. Anyway, I I'll be there, yes. Goodbye. Thanks. Next time I'll answer the phone myself. Listen, he is in love with you. I know by his voice over the phone. Oh, you know everything. I know this. If you want him, you can have him. But he's going to the Philippines to invent silk or something. It'll take years. Don't let him go. If he wants to go, why shouldn't he? He's free, and he's young enough to think he could turn hemp into silk. But you'd be much happier if he stayed here, wouldn't you? What difference does that make? Plenty. You know what will happen. Some other dame will get him. One of those hula hula wiki wiki numbers. Oh, so what? There's nothing I can do about oh, it. Oh, yes, there is. Bobby, if you knew just half a dozen sentences to say that would make him propose to you tonight, would you say them? No, I wouldn't. What kind of sentences? Just a few simple ones. Now, you listen to your older sister. When he asks you if you weren't really going out tonight, tell him you were going out with somebody named Fred. I'd better write it down for you. Can you read my shorthand? I guess so. Go on. Well, you're going with Fred to the rainbow room, see? Now, Rims will ask you to stay. Then you say you told Fred to call you at the party, and you'll call it off when he telephones. Then I'll telephone. Isn't it easy? Oh, Flora, you're wasting your time. It, it's so silly. I'm not a bit interested. Well, then what? Well, then he'll ask if he can take you home. And you suddenly take out your hanky and begin to cry a little. Cry? Me? Yes, you cry. And he'll ask you what's the matter. And you say, oh, I'm so tired of, of everything, Rims. And I'm afraid I'm not very good company. And he'll say, oh, yes, you are. And he'll put his arm around you. Or would he? Now, how could he help it? Well, after that, it gets easier all the time. You just say, Rims, dear, sometimes you're the only person in the world I can talk to. That's good. Sometimes I can't bear to be with anybody else. Oh, Florrie, I couldn't. But that's exactly what you've got to say, and you go right on and say, Rims, don't you ever get tired of poor little me? And then he'll say, never, of course. That's right. And you say, you're such a darling, and it's going to be awfully difficult. What is? That's what he'll say, what is. And you say, marrying somebody else. Then he'll draw back and say, you getting married? And you'll say, well, a girl's got to get married sometime, you know, while she's got chances. And he'll say, do you get many chances? And you'll say, modestly, you know how it is. Not a month goes by, et cetera, et cetera. And then you'll say, no, no, I won't. Yes, you will. You'll say, well, Fred wants me to marry him. He's awfully in love with me, and I don't want to go on working forever. And then he'll say, well, if you're getting married this season, why not marry me? And there you are. I tell you, it's in the bag. Oh, he'll never fall for that. Why not? He isn't such a fool for one thing, and for another, I don't think it's fair. My darling, how do you think people get married? I don't know. I'll say you don't. Honestly, do you think a person with any sense would fall for a deliberate trap like that? Why, honey, hundreds of thousands of them fall for it every year. Well, I think it's humiliating and degrading, and I'll have nothing to do with it. Good night. You'll probably remember the system anyway. It comes natural.
want me. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Why, uh, I thought you'd never get here. Oh, well, uh, well, some friends called. Oh. Well, let's check your coat. Say, that's a nice dress. Why haven't I seen that on before? I just made it. You made it? I wish you'd make my clothes for me. You never asked me. Oh. Uh, you don't want to dance. Let's talk. All right. Your sister said you had a previous engagement. Well, I didn't. You're a poor liar, Bobby. If that's anything against you. But I say I didn't have a date. Anyway, I feel sorry for the other guy, and it's sweet of you to turn down the rainbow room for me. Wait a minute. I haven't turned it down yet. You mean he's coming here? Oh. No, he, he's going to telephone me here. Oh. You know, I've been wanting to talk to you. I haven't seen you for days. That isn't my fault. I know. I, I've been pretty busy getting ready for my trip. I understand. Have you got a match? Sure. I wish you were coming along with me. Maybe you could use a stenographer. <laughs> no, not a chance. Not on my salary. Miss Hallivy? Are you Miss Hallivy? Why, yes. Telephone. For me? Yes. Hello? Hello, Bobby. Flory. Now, let's see how good you are. Tell him you're busy, will you? Do you really want me to stick around? Oh, sure I do. Fred, uh, I'm awfully sorry, but I can't go tonight. Say, <laughs> you're all right. Keep it up. No, no, really, I can. Oh, it isn't that. Uh, no, Fred, please don't come over here. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when I see you, yeah. Goodbye. There. That's swell of you, Bobby. You sure you didn't want to go? If I'd wanted to, I would have. I'm glad. Something is pressing on my mind. Bobby, do you think it's a good idea, me going to the Philippines? It's an awfully good chance. Well, what I mean is, maybe I can invent something really important. Something that will revolutionize things. And, well, that's why I'm going. Do you think I ought to? It's an awfully good chance. <laughs> I guess I said that already. It's a chance of a lifetime. Rims, we did have a good spring together, didn't we? Yeah. Time certainly flew by. Yeah, it's autumn now. Bobby, my boat leaves in the morning. And a thought strikes me. I never kissed you. Do you mind if I kissed you goodbye? Well, seeing as it's a goodbye occasion. Thank you. you've done to my lipstick. What's the matter? Oh, Rims, I'm afraid I'm not very good company. Maybe you better take me home. Oh, yes, you are. Well, what's wrong? Well, uh... Well, Rims, sometimes you're the only person in the world I can talk to. Yeah? The only person I can bear to be with. Oh, gee, that's a genuine compliment. Rims. Don't you ever get tired of poor little me? What? Well, I should say not. Never. Oh, Rims, you, you're such a darling. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, oh, but you are, and... and... and it's going to be awfully difficult. What is? Marrying somebody else. You getting married? Well, well, a girl's got to get married sometime while she's got chances. Do you get plenty of chances? Oh, oh, well, well, you know how it is. Why, uh, hardly a month goes by. Don't tell me you're really contemplating marriage. I mean, with somebody definite? Well, well, Freddie's awfully in love with me, and, and, well, Rims, I don't want to go on working forever. I see. Yeah, I see. 
I didn't know you felt that way. I thought when I got back from the Philippines, a success, I was hoping that maybe you and I... Oh, no, Rins, no. You go on to the Philippines. That's what you were cut out for, and, and me... And me, well, um, I'll get married and live on Long Island and, and have a couple of blonde kids. Fred's a blonde, too, you know, and, well, that's what I was cut out for. Gee, that sounds great. Uh, I mean, the picture marriage. Well, it sounds better than the Philippines. Oh, oh, no, no, Rims, you go on. You, you must go. And besides, Fred's asked me to marry him. Oh, what's wrong with me asking you? In fact, I am asking you. You are? Yes. Will you marry me? Oh, well, Rims, the Philippines. Well, the Philippines can go to the devil. There's enough silk in the world anyway. Well, what do you say? Well, I'll, I'll have to think it over. Well, you certainly won't think it over. Bobby, I'm in. Quiet, please. Herbie has a few words to say. Say it, Herbie. Yeah. Uh, well, Rims, uh, parting is such sweet sorrow. That's from Shakespeare, a writer, one of the best. <laughs> and uh, uh, we thought, well, uh, well, to cut a long story short... I can I... see he means to take all night. Here's the situation, Rims. All of us kids got together, seeing you're taking a trip, and donated a sum pro rata to get you these genuine leather traveling bags. The rest is in my heart and theirs. Goodbye and good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you very much. I'm afraid I won't be able to use these bags. I'm not going to the Philippines. You're not going to the Philippines? Why not? Well, what do you mean? Well, I want you to meet the future Mrs. Rossen. <laughs> what are we going to do with these bags? They cost a nice piece of coin. What's the crying for? I purposely told them to leave off the initials. <laughs> about to anchor the furniture down. Oh. Good morning, darling. Good morning. I'm glad to see you're up. Say, whose idea was it to live over a garage? Now, don't you complain. This is the only flat in New York City with a garden for $22.50 a month. It may have a garden, but it's also got the DTs. Rims, it's stuck again. Huh? That automatic combination lock of yours. I get locked in here 10 times a day. Still, it's not a bad idea. You press a button and the lock opens by itself, and nobody can come in from the outside. Yeah, but it takes an hour and a half to get out from the inside. What'll I do in case of fire? Well, uh, just uh, yell fire and put on your best-looking pajamas. See? Now, get into your bath and I'll fix your breakfast. What have we got this morning? Eggs. Eggs. There you are. Oh, thanks. Say, you look pretty good this morning. It must be this new shade of lipstick. How long have we been married, Bobby? Well, let's see. We paid six installments on the radio. That's six months. Uh-uh. Eight months. We missed two payments. What's the matter, Rims? Don't you like the biscuit? Just because every young wife is supposed to make bad biscuits is no reason you can't break the tradition. Oh, Rims, nobody could cook in a tiny combination kitchen bath like we have. Just you wait till the landlord builds a new one upstairs, and then you'll see. Are you sure you want that kitchen? You won't have an alibi then. I won't need one. And it's going to cost us $10 more a month in rent. We're both working. We can afford it. 
<laughs> Yesterday, when the landlord was here, I made him a cup of coffee. After he tasted it, he said, I don't know what you folks want a kitchen for. You should eat out more. <laughs> Maybe if both of us got a raise, we could do that, too. Oh, Rims. Oh, I'm just kidding. How about a kiss, huh? Are you happy, Rims? Well, sure. Why do you ask? Oh, I'm just collecting answers for the Gallup poll. According to the comic strips, no married man has a right to be happy. But I'm happy. I'm very happy. How about you? I'm not exactly miserable myself. Is that fair to the comic strip writers? We'll never tell them. The European orders. Gee, I'm worried. The orders get smaller and smaller all the time. It's the war. You can't send things over there even if they have the money to pay for them. Wouldn't you think people would get tired of hearing speeches and brass bands? You think they stop and realize how silly it all is? If you ask me, it's psychological. Yeah, people like to push other people around. Especially the big ones, the little ones. You know what I think? I think if they had a couple of football games to go to on Saturdays, they wouldn't have any wars. They could use up their perspiration there. If you'll pardon my manner of speaking. Hello? Mrs. Rawson? Yes, sir, she's right here. Yes, sir, I'll tell her. Mr. Norman, he wants to see you in the office. I wonder what for. A friendly chat. Oh. Take it easy, he's got a wife who understands him. <laughs> the inventory ready by Monday. Come in, Mrs. Rawson. Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Norman. Well, are things going with you and Rims? Marriage uh, agreeing with them? Oh, yes. We, we like it so well, we're telling all our friends about it. Well, I'm glad to hear it. You know, marriages have a great deal to contend with these days. Tough on people, what with unemployment and war. Oh, yes. Uh, Gertrude has a way to end all wars at football games. She says if everybody went to a... Yes, I suppose she's amusing as usual. But you see, the war has crippled our European business badly. Yes, I've been noticing with the result that we have to cut down. And we feel, that is, uh, Mr. Martin feels, that where the husband is already working, the wife should be let out. Oh, I see. Uh, just a temporary measure, of course. We hope soon to resume normal operations. But in the meantime, I am forced to give you your notice as of tomorrow morning. Tomorrow? I'm sorry. Thank you very much. I know. That's what he calls a friendly chat. Well, it's only a job. Bobby, it's no use. You know what we're going to do? We're going to celebrate. Celebrate? Yeah, celebrate. Starting tonight, we're going to celebrate in style. Dad, you think he's crazy too, don't you? Sure. Any man marrying to the Halliby family is a little insane. Wait a minute, you don't get my idea. Look, Rims, I lost my job. What are we celebrating? The fact I can sleep late every morning? Oh, well, we can celebrate that too if you want to. But mainly it's because you lost your job. Crazy, I told you. No, no, I'm not crazy. Look, th that's what we're going to do from now on. Celebrate every bad break that comes into our life. Not the good ones. There won't be enough of those. Just the things that crush most people. That's what the Rossens celebrate. Don't you see that? Oh, Rims. But don't you get it? It's, it's thumbing our noses at everything that's hitting us and keeping us down. Don't you see that? Yeah, yeah, Rims. Yes, I see. Well, then, let's eat. What time is it? Seven o'clock. Gee, we, we certainly must have celebrated last night. There's an awful hammering in my head. Oh, me too. Not only that, I feel as if I'm being sawed in half. 
Me too. I, I hope it's the same half. Rims, it's the carpenters. They're starting on the new kitchen. Don't you think you ought to say something? Holy cats! Well, gee, I, I, I don't know what to say. Well, what do you think I ought to say? Oh, you'll think of something. Huh? Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry to woke you folks up, but we wanted to get this thing started. That's quite all right. Yeah, as soon as we get the framework up, it won't be so noisy. I'm sure of it. But, uh, you see, fellas, we have to call it off. Oh, now, wait a minute. What's a little noise? We'll have this thing up in a few days, and you'll have yourself a love nest. It'll be just like a dream. We still have to call the whole thing off. Why, what's the matter? Well, uh, you see, we, we can't afford it. Can't afford? Why not? Well, there was two salaries coming in, now there's only one. Oh. Did you get that? Yeah, and what's my little lady gonna say? When I left her this morning, she said, I'll bet you don't work today. Mm, maybe she was right. Yeah, now what am I gonna tell her? Oh, what's the use of complaining? Come on. Let's get around the Strand Theater before they change the morning prices. Sorry, fellas. It's all right, buddy. Better luck next time. My wife must be psychic. For your hope chest. <laughs> I guess this is what the judge meant when he said, for better or for worse. Personally, I thought he was kidding. Rims, did you ever see a scene in a picture where the whole world was against two people, trying to pull them apart? I think there was one picture in which I didn't see it. Well, well that's how I feel. Like, like we were standing high on a rock, and, and there was thunder and lightning, and, and the wind was howling. But, but we wouldn't care, because we'd have each other. We'd not only have each other, we'd have pneumonia, too. Uh, darling, while we're out here, how about taking a sunbath, huh? Oh, no, you'll be late to the office. Come on. Uh, what a door. I don't like the expression on your face. You look troubled. I'll give you the bad news in just a minute. It's slowly dawning upon me why we got this apartment so cheap. Glad somebody's working overtime. Well, the treasurer's report's all ready. Want to hear it? Spare me the horrible details. We earn $101 a month, and we spend 108 Well, at least it's round numbers anyway. But, Rims, what are we going to do? Either we've got to cut down on expenses or earn more money. That's the only way we can keep our heads above water. Why try? It might be pleasanter underwater. Oh, please, Rims, I'm serious. So I'm clowning. We need a balanced diet anyway. Rims, you know what I've been thinking? Make it good. Well, I was thinking that if I don't get a job pretty soon and, and we don't win the sweepstakes, well, there's still my day bed at home. It, it pulls out. No, I, I was just thinking that two can sleep in it as uncomfortably as one. Listen, if it ever comes to the point where we have to live with your folks, 101 coming in and 108 going out, it may come to that pretty soon. Yes, Rims, it may. Gee, six people in one bathroom. We'll need ration cards to get in. Well, what do you think marriage is? A pretty postcard picture? Lots of people get married and go through what we're going through. All right, I have a right to complain about it, haven't I? All right, complain. All right, I am. All right! Oh, Bobby, what's the matter with us? When I'm at the office, I keep thinking about coming home and seeing you. When I get here, we always get into an argument. I don't know, Rims. It's the same way with me. All day long, I think how marvelous it'll be when you come home, and, and then you do, and it isn't marvelous at all. It's a problem. Well, Dad always says, when you have a problem you can't solve, go to bed and ignore it. Yeah, but your father doesn't live over a garage. Oh, Rims, we left the lights on in the living room. Well, I like to leave them on. Makes me feel like a spendthrift. Listen, we can use the money better than the electric company. All right, but if I was single, I'd leave them on just as a gesture. sorry about not going to the Philippines. Oh, no. I never give it a thought. Even if you had gone, I know it's more practical than your other ideas still. Silk from him. Oh, I was pretty sure it would work. I'd get silk or pretty close to it. 
As a matter of fact, they're getting it from almost everything these days. Coal, vegetables, well, everything. I never should have let you marry me. I should have made you go. Hey, that's treason. I did want to go. Yes, I know. But then, that night of the party, well, I... I just had to have you, that's all. No, it was my fault. I... I just had to have you. You know, sometimes I almost wish I was somebody else's wife. Then, then you could be my boyfriend and, and you could come to see me. Well, uh, I, I don't know about that. Oh, not really, I mean, but don't you see, it would be better. Because then you'd always like me and you'd always want to see me and, and we'd have to scheme to meet places and, and you'd hate the old brute that owned me. Yeah, but I'm the old brute that owns you. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. You're not an old brute. You're the dearest, sweetest guy in the world. Well, if you feel that way about it, why do we care if we're rich or poor? Ain't it the truth? Kiss me. Rims, I... I think you can turn the light out in here, too. Sign here, please. Thanks. Would you mind saving those stamps for me, Mrs. Rawson? I'm a philatelist, you know. Oh, sure. Thanks. Goodbye, Mrs. Rawson. Goodbye. I didn't notice you. Most men whistle when I go by. Did you just get home from work? Yeah. What are you doing out here? Oh, just thinking. You can think upstairs, too. Well, what do you got there? Oh, just cold cuts. Mom called up this morning, and I expect the family for dinner. Oh, that's nice. But uh, how would you like to go out and celebrate tonight? Bad news? Uh-huh. Norman called me in and presented me with a 10% cut. Oh, Rims. But he says it's only temporary. In a month, it may have to be a 20% cut. Whoopee. It seems that three more ships were sunk today. I don't get the connection. Anyway, we're still on that rock together. Yeah, but how it's raining. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll go to the store and I'll get some, some chops and some confetti and some tin horns and we'll all celebrate. You go upstairs and peel the potatoes. I don't mind taking a cut, but gee, somebody else is war. 
Well, don't take it out on the potatoes. Just the skins. Thank you. I'll stand. What's biting you? I have a bill here of $73.28, which you owe the Fish Girdler Vandenberg Furniture Company. They've turned the bill over to me for collection. And the Messrs. Fish Girdler Vandenberg have made a wise choice. Frankly, I'm worried about this bill. Well, why should you worry for three other guys? Let them do their own worrying. What do you intend doing about this bill? I'll pay it when I have the money. And when will that be? Better ask my boss about that. He just presented me with a 10% cut. Do you know the law in this state concerning unpaid bills? No, but I'm willing to let you tell me. The law provides for a full civil action against dead beasts like you. A judgment can be obtained. We can garnish your salary, attach your property, then hold you in contempt of court if... It's six o'clock. I'm on my own time now. Let the whole thing drop. You got a drink? No. <laughs> What's the idea of calling me a deadbeat? Well, professionally, to me, you are a deadbeat. Personally, I like you. Till six o'clock, I'll hound you to death. After that, you're my brother-in-law. You had me worried for a while. Well, I guess you're just doing your duty to your clients. A fish girl or Vandenberg? <laughs> I don't care if you never pay those heels. Say, what was that about a 10% cut? Starts tomorrow. In a month, it may be 20. Just one thing after another. I guess you'll have to sell a yacht. When I was single, I never had an unpaid bill. Now I'm always broke. Two can live as cheap as one. If one don't eat. Yeah. You know, Willie, things are just piling up on me. Me too. Marriage. It's something they slipped over on us while we were in the trenches. Oh, marriage is all right, I guess, but not for poor people. It ain't even all right for rich people. They're humans too. Someday we men will get together and revolt. Well, the only way we can stage a revolt is to have the army and navy behind us, and most of those boys are single. That's right. Funny thing, though, Willie. I'm still in love with Bobby. I'll tell you something even funnier. I'm really in love with Flory. Maybe it's the times. Maybe it's us. Maybe it's us and the times. Maybe it's everything. Say, we're talking as if we had a couple of drinks in us. It's an idea. Let's start a revolt with a few beers before the family gathering. All right. We'll go out the back way. Say, how much dough you got on you? Oh, about a dollar. I got two. That makes three. Well, we can't stage much of a revolution on three dollars. <laughs> well, the air's like wine. We'll go out and breathe deep. This is a fine dinner party. Where could he have gone? I don't know. Well, it's 9.20. If you ask me, we're being stood up. I say, let's eat. If I'd known we were going to wait like this, I'd have brought my knitting. Here, Mom, eat an olive. Don't worry, Bobby. Rims can take care of himself. Well, I hope nothing's happened to him. That's not what I'm hoping. Maybe we ought to call the police. Do you think we ought to bother them? They work so hard. Say, so you two didn't have a fight or anything, did you? Of course not. Are you sure? What was the last expression on his face? Well, he was pretty unhappy about taking the cut. Is that all? Yes, that's all. You can tell us, you know, we're still in the family, unless you're ashamed of us. Flory, I tell you, we didn't have an argument. Don't lie to me. Something happened. Rims just doesn't walk out of the house. Oh, Flory. I'll bet something did happen. I'll find out. Why can't you leave the girl alone? I don't get sore, Bobby. I'm only trying to help. You can tell me. You and Rims aren't getting along, are you? Whatever made you think that? Ten years of married life made me think that. We're getting along as well as can be expected on twenty-two fifty a week minus ten percent. Oh, if it's just the money, you'll be all right. Flory, I'm afraid I'm going to lose him. No, you won't. A few bumps won't bust up any marriage. It will ours. He didn't want to get married in the first place. He was tricked into it. A, a marriage like that can't take those bumps. You know what I think? I think it's time for you to resort to female tactic number one, a baby. There's nothing like a good fat baby to tie a man down. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> nothing. Nothing, only that's a trick, isn't it? Like the questions on the pad. Sure, it's a trick. <laughs> but that's not what you're laughing at. <laughs> no. No, it isn't. <laughs> Bobby, what's the matter? <laughs> Dad? <laughs> Bobby? <laughs> Dad? <laughs> Dad? Hmm? What's the matter? This way, pal. Thank you, pal. As 
block. That's remarkable invention. Talent. That's what you've got. Talent. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They, they, they may be here already. Let's take a look, huh? Not a soul. We're perfectly safe. Have a seat, pal. Thank you, pal. <laughs> when they do get here, we'll be very stern with them about being late. Why can't people be on time? Time, time is relative. I read a book once. Did I read it or did I write it? No, I never wrote anything before. I guess I must have read it. Say, where's those potatoes we were peeling? Now, you listen to me, pal. Anyway, there's a very dull chapter in this book, which I shall describe to you in detail. Willie! Did you hear anything? Not a thing. Must be my conscience. To continue... My conscience is developing a punch. You listen to me, Willie Sands. Rems, I don't think we are alone. <coughs> Mrs. Livingston, I presume. Don't you, Mrs. Livingston, me. <laughs> Willie, have you had a drink? Frankly, I'm too drunk to remember. Wait till I get you home. <laughs> when you get him home, Flora, you'll tuck him into bed with honors. The boys are wonderful. I haven't seen a real drunk since repeal. Best thing about this guy is his understanding heart. <laughs> That's right, understanding heart. Hey, Popsy, did you hear about my cut? Yes, I heard all about your cut. <laughs> Well, uh, that's what Willie and I were celebrating about. We took a trip to the Philippines. Yes, sir. Had a drink at every stopover. Newark, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. Yeah, Kansas City, the bartender had to give us credit. That's nonsense. That's right. And you know what else we did? We made the rounds of all the hotel lobbies. Just for an experiment, you understand? Just to see how many people recognized me. But who recognized me? Who? Nobody. Not a single individual. In fact, not a soul. I could have been in the Philippines right now, giving orders instead of taking them, working and doing something. Yeah, maybe. You know who I am? I'll tell you who I am. I'm just the guy that missed the boat on everything. Now, I'll tell you folks something else. I'm not in the very best condition. Oh, oh Dad, is he hurt? Poor boy, no, no, that's too much all right. yeah. We'll put his head under the pile. Who am about to lie down? Salute you. Oh, no, you don't. Mom, give me a hand. Get up, oh, let me hold. Willie. Let me go. I want to see my pal. Dad, give me a pillow, will you? You can't oh, take me home. Willie, we you drank out of the same bottle and we'll oh. sleep in the same oh, bed. Willie! I'll get a wet towel. Thanks, Bobby, for a lovely dinner. Goodbye, pal. Come on, Willie. Don't worry, Bobby dear. Oh, no, no, Mom, I won't. You go on with the others. Good night. Good night, darling. Now, just let him rest. I'd better get Willie home before he goes off on another tour. I'm sorry, Bobby. That's all right, Rims. Now you go to sleep. I'm glad one of us celebrated. glasses around? Did you forget them? Uh-huh. They're right in your pocket. <laughs> well, I had to have some excuse to be alone with my daughter for a few minutes. How's the boyfriend? Oh, sound asleep. He'll be all right in the morning. That's not what I'm worrying about. We're moving in with you folks tomorrow. If you have to. We're pretty awful people. We're a month behind in the rent now. <sighs> I suppose it's all my fault. At my age, I should have been a rich man, president of Martin's. 
If you were president of Martin's, you wouldn't have let me marry Rims. I shouldn't let you marry anybody. Marriage is no love affair, my dear. It's a house, bills, dishpans, and family quarrels. That's the way the system beats you. They beat the wedding of the romance, hang a 300-pound landlord around your neck, and drown you in grocery bills. If you're in love with a man, so a few oats. Why the devil should the boys have a monopoly on wild oats? Yes, I see. Maybe I should... No. No, I shouldn't have said that. Marriage is fine. It's grand. It's the cornerstone of progress, the backbone of civilization. Don't you believe anything against it? I won't if you tell me. Dad. What? Getting married stopped him from the only real thing he wanted to do. And I tricked him into it. Oh, I've heard all about that. But show me one man who ever got married because it was his own idea. If he were free, he could go to the Philippines right now. He got a letter. I didn't tell him. Do you think I should? Do you want him to go? Well, I... Do you want to lose him? No. Then don't say a word. But isn't that another trick? Sure it is. You started married life on one, now you'll find one trick will pile up on another. I guess you're right. Flory just suggested even another trick to hold him. She said I should start thinking about having a baby. Oh, did she? Well, your sister's right. That'll hold him. I'll vouch for that. Could you stand a good joke on Flory? Mm-hmm. I am going to have a baby. Bobby. Are you sure? Does Rims know? No. Then tell him. And you can tell him, too, about the letter. He'll stay. It's simple. Oh, yes, it's simple. He'll stay. He'll become the usual doting father. In time, he'll forget silly things like turning hemp into silk. Oh, he'll be tied down all right. Are you proud of me, father? Bobby. What is it, dear? Oh, is there any aspirin in the house? I don't think so. I'll run down to the drugstore and get some. Oh, wait a minute, Popsy. Don't you foxy me. Put him up, young man. Get yourself a reputation first. I hand you the Pearl of Washington Heights. When I come back, I'll beat the stuffing out of you. Well, the stuffing's all out of me already. And I'll beat it back in here. You better come inside, dear. You'll catch cold. Oh, nothing can make me feel any worse than I feel now. Can I get you something hot to drink? Oh, no, thanks. I think the aspirin will fix me up. You know, a little while back, I was seeing you double, and both of you are beautiful. Thanks. Here, let me help you. Rims, there's something I've got to talk to you about. Yeah, what? We can't stay here any longer. We're behind last month's rent. We can't pay this month's, and next month is almost here. We've got to get out. But, gee, isn't there anything we can do about it? Nothing, except move in with the folks. Holy cats. How did all this happen to me? Did I bother anybody? Who's got it in for me? Well, I've lived in hall bedrooms before, but at least they were my own. Well, all right, then. Do something about it. Don't take the cut. Tell Norman you get your full salary or you quit. Sure, I'm indispensable to them. Martins can't open their doors without me. Listen, they fire me and their stock goes up. Well, then get another job. There are other things you can do, and there's a million jobs in New York. Name one. Well, Rims, if you're just going to sit in that chair and adopt that attitude... I'm not adopting any attitude. Listen, I hate the job at Martins. I hate any other job. There's only one thing I want to do and I can do. Oh... What's the use? Rims, there's something else I want to tell you. Yeah, what? That job in the Philippines, it's still open. What did you say? I said that job in the Philippines, it's still open. How do you know? A letter came for you this morning, I read it. This morning? Well, that's the answer I've been waiting for. Where is it? I tore it up. Tore it up? You tore it up? I didn't mean to, Rims. Honest, I just couldn't help myself. Well, what was the idea? 
I was afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid I'd run out on you? Yes. Well, you don't have to worry about that. I'll stick around. I'm trapped. Trapped, just as if I was a... Um, I'm sorry, Bobby. Well, you know how it is with a married guy. You, well, you can't do the... Well, things kind of close in on you. You know what I mean. Sure, I know what you mean. Ah, uh, how about a kiss, huh? You relax and I'll fix the dishes. Rims. Rims, I've been thinking. Maybe we'd be happier. Well, it's worked with lots of people. Maybe if we... If we what? If we had a baby. A baby? Well, that's a brainstorm. Well, where'd you get that idea? Well, Rims, when a woman's really in love with a man, the thing she wants most is to have a child. That's very nice, Bobby, but use your head. It's simple arithmetic. We haven't got enough to get along on now. I, I know, but people say a baby brings luck, and the baby wouldn't care if we were rich or poor. I know, but I care. I care a lot. When you have a kid, you want to give it some advantages. Well, what could we do for it? What could we do with it? Well, where could we put it? But, Rims, there's a million people getting along with less than we have. I know, but by the skin of their teeth, I don't call that living. Bobby, it's ridiculous. But, Rims, I tell you, it's impossible. For heaven's sakes, forget it. Maybe you're right. Well, what's the matter, Bobby? Nothing, Rims. Well... Well, forget about it, just as you say. Well, wait a minute. I didn't know you felt that way. Well, there's nothing I like better. It's crazy, but maybe we... Bobby, you're not... You're not gonna oh, have... No, 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 Rims, I'm not. Tell me the truth. Honest, I'm not. I swear it. Don't lie to me. Why'd you bring it up if you're not? I was just trying to rope you in, Rims. I was afraid I was going to lose you, and I was trying to find a way to hold on to you, but I won't do it. If I can't keep you on the level, then I'll just have to lose you. What are you talking about? Honest, there isn't any baby, Rims. You've got to believe me. It, it was just a trick. Trick? Well, people don't trick about a serious matter like babies. That's exactly what I was doing, and it isn't the first time. I never should have married you. I tricked you into that, too. What are you saying? I tricked you. I tricked you. Can't you understand? Th those questions, they were all prepared, rehearsed. What questions? What goes on? The night of the party, the night on the balcony, all that stuff about Fred, it was lies, couldn't you see? There never was any Fred or anybody else. It was just a trick to rope you into marrying me, to keep you from going to the Philippines. Holy cats. Well, I'm glad you know. I couldn't keep it in me any longer. I remember now. It comes to me like a flash. Roped in. How do you like that? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. And you were the girl that was so honest I fell in love with. The girl who wouldn't lie to me about her age. The girl who wouldn't let me take a taxi. The girl I, I, I felt so comfortable with, I'd show the holes in my socks. Roped in. How do you like that? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, all right. We'll wash everything clean. We'll call it quits. You're still single. You never met me and you never took me bowling. You can go to the Philippines and there's nobody and nothing to stop you. You're free. What is this, another trick? I'm only telling you this so you can go. Don't press me. I'm contemplating it seriously. Well, go on. What's keeping you? Pack your bags and go. All right, I will. Boy, what a fella gives up when he gets married. As long as he's single, he owns the earth. But when he's married, his time's not his own, his money's not his own. He's got to keep on working whether he wants to or not. When I got tired of a job before, I just quit. That was all. I could have been in the Philippines right now. But no, I had to let you rope me in. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. If you think a man gives up a lot when he gets married, so does a girl, and don't you forget it. I spend the whole day here taking care of this place for you, cooking your meals and washing your dishes. We never go anywhere because we can't afford it, and every time I spend a dime, I feel guilty. It's degrading, that's what it is. But throw it up to me, I don't earn enough. That's right, throw it up to me. Well, you don't. All right, I'll go to a place where I can. And all I gotta say is that we're lucky we haven't got anything to tie us together. Yes, we're lucky, we're very lucky. A baby. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Roped in. I ought to have my head examined. Uh, three, two, one. 
Goodbye. Blocks before I could find a cut rate drugstore. Where's Rim? He's gone. What do you mean, gone? Where? A hotel, I suppose. Then Manila. Manila? That's well, crazy. How could he leave you now? I told him he could. You? But you told him you were going to have a baby, didn't you? No, I didn't. And I certainly were. No. No, let's don't. It's just another trick, even though it's one of nature's. I'm through with tricks. Will you take me home? Where's your coat? Proud of me now, Father? You crazy fool. No. no. All right. All right. But, Gertrude, just because Bobby and Rims came to a parting of the ways, must you take it out on me? Please, Mr. Smith, I find your presence here very stuffy. Please eliminate yourself at once, if you'll pardon my manner of speaking. Go figure out, women. What's the matter? I was personally instrumental, maybe, in the disruption of their marriage. Here he is now. I won't even say hello to him. Hello, Rims. Oh, hello, Herbert. Oh, I could punch you in the nose for what you did to my love life. Well, you better hurry up and do it. My boat leaves at midnight. When the tide comes in or goes out, I don't know which. And Bobby left alone here in New York. I suppose you're not even going to spend a nickel to call her up and wish her bon voyage. I'm calling her tonight. Oh, a regular cavalier. Sure you're not going to reverse the charges? I thought you wasn't even going to say hello to him. I didn't say hello to him, and I'm not going to say goodbye to him. But in between, I can tell him a few things. Don't mind, Gertrude. She don't mean 90% of what she says. I'll meet you at the boat at 11.30. Gertrude, sweet! Oh, hello, Rim. Oh, hello, Pop. I hear you're sailing tonight. Yeah, at midnight. How's Bobby? Awful. Well, I don't feel exactly like a rose myself. Will you tell her I'll call her later this evening? Sure. Have you got a minute? Yeah. yeah. Glad to see you're not angry. Huh? At what? Oh, everything, the, the trick. Oh, no, I'm not angry at the trick. As a matter of fact, after thinking it over, I'm flattered. Nobody else ever wanted me that much. Isn't there any way you can take her with you? What would we live on, bananas? If I only had some extra money, a thousand would do, or we could stretch it out. I got $130 in the bank in dimes. How far could you stretch that? <laughs> Who's the villain in the piece, Pop? Certainly it isn't Bobby. I don't think it's me. Gee, I've tried hard enough. Could be me. Oh. Any father-in-law with only $130 on the bank is a heavy. <laughs> no. It's not you, Pop. Well, I guess it's $1,000 you haven't got. Now you're getting warm. There must be a simple solution to it somewhere. It's only $1,000. Lots of people have got a thousand dollars. Lots of people haven't. <laughs> and of all the people who haven't got a thousand dollars, I haven't got it the most. Well, it's all over. Rims, there's something about Bobby you've got to know. What? No, I'm not the one. She'll have to tell you herself. But tell me what? Ah, oh, forget it. It's not that important. 
Good boy. Glad to fetch in the family for a while, anyway. Give my love to the rest of the folks. Ain't it a mess? Just sit down and relax, Dad. Bobby's all right. What time to say she left? Just after dinner. Only she didn't have any dinner. Did she say where she was going? She's just walking up and down the street. I don't know what good that's going to do. At least she won't have to listen to her sister telling her it's all for the best. I know a couple of things that could happen to you that would be all for the best. Don't tempt me. They may happen. Very funny. Say, don't do that, Flory. You know I got a weak heart. Well, straighten up, Henry. I want to see if this sweat. Oh, for heaven's sake, Myrtle, stop bothering me with that nonsense. Well, how can I finish I it? I don't care. Henry. I don't care if you never finish it. Dad, you're taking this whole thing much harder than Bobby is. What if I am? I hate to see Bobby go through all this. One hell of you has a right to be happy. That must be Bobby. What did I say? Oh, Mom. Hello, Bobby. Hello, Dad. How about your dinner? I don't want anything to eat. I'm too tired. Rim's call? Not yet. He said he would. He will. Oh, Dad. Now, oh, Bobby. Bobby, that's not like you. Come on, lie down in Fly's room. Hmm? Rest. Come on, Bobby. You're taking this much too hard. Like to hear a few proverbs or something? A few maxims? No. Good. But they don't know any. I don't know. I don't feel sorry for you. Me, I feel sorry for myself. I guess what's happening to you is the final defeat for me. Do you know when I stopped living? When I was 43. I realized then what the end of my life would be. Exactly what it had been up to then. You know, repetitious, dull, completely worthless to anyone. Dad. Yes, it is. But at least there was one thing left for me. I could see to it that it didn't happen to you. In a fly world, she could take care of herself. But I had a different sort of life plan for you. Not this. None of your dad's pitfalls. Please, Dad. Yeah. I was going to see to it. I can't even scrape up the few pennies to keep you and Rims together. Only a thousand dollars. I'd better get out of here. I will be giving you proverbs. Why? You haven't done that since you were a kid. Did I do that? I don't remember. You wouldn't. You were only four. It's a father's privilege to remember. some work at the store. Oh, that's too bad. Well, it means overtime. Well, try and get back as early as you can. Myrtle, I'm sorry I lost my temper. When? You know, before, about the sweater. Oh, that. I never listened to you anyway. Yeah, that's the best way. How's it coming? Oh, 
getting along. That's good. Thank you. I wish Bobby and Rims would get together. I want to start a sweater for him, too. Well, maybe you will. Not bad, huh? Not Henry. Oh, Henry, you'll probably be back before we are. We're going to the movies. Good night, Mr. Oliver. Good night. Watchman down the store. Yeah, your father had an accident. Oh, where is he? He's at the city hospital. Oh, thanks. Hello. Hello, Bobby. This is Rims. Rims, I can't talk to you now. Something's happened to Dad. Well, where is he now? City hospital. Please. Shut off the power. The brakes wouldn't hold. She was still going down. It's the second time it happened this year. But they were supposed to fix the brakes, weren't they, Pete? Yes, there were, but that didn't help any. The whole system is no good. But what was he doing upstairs? I, I don't know. I thought he had gone home for the night. How is he, Doctor? Well, he's shaken up a bit, but it doesn't seem to be anything serious. I'll have a look at the x-rays and let you know more about it. You may go in now. Thanks. Dad. Oh, Bobby. Hello, oh, Rims. You bookkeepers. How do you feel? My arm hurts a bit. I guess I'm all right. You gave me a pretty big scare, Mr. Halliby. Did I, Pete? Hey, yes. Well, I'm glad you're okay now. Well, I have to get back to work. See you soon, Mr. Halliby. Good night, all. Oh, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Oh, forget it. Good night. Good night. Where's Mother and... Oh, they're still at the movies. Good. What were you doing up on the 10th floor? Oh, I went up to Ken and Ledger. The store vault's up there. Dad, that was no accident. What are you saying, Bob? She's just being silly, isn't she, Pop? Sure. Why did you do it? Oh, well... I thought that you and Rims, with the compensation money... I guess I couldn't even put over a little thing like that. Well, I got bad news.
news for you, Mr. Hellivan. The x-rays don't show a thing. I think you can go home in the morning. Oh. Thanks, Doc. Oh, couldn't I go home now? I'd like to be with my family tonight. Oh, I suppose so. Uh, but you'd better rest for an hour or two first. Gee, do I have to, Doc? Yes, you'd better, dear. You go to sleep. I'll be outside. It isn't every girl who can have a crazy father. Thank you, Doctor. Rin? What a thing to do. Yeah. What a guy. Your boat leaves at 12, doesn't it? Yeah. Gee, the hour hand is off now. It's 20 minutes to 11. You haven't got much time. That's right. I still have some packing to do. Don't you think you better hurry? Bobby. No, no, Rims. Let's not talk about it anymore. There's still no answer. I hope you'll be happy, and I hope you'll turn hemp into silk, and I hope it'll be commercially practical. I'm sorry our marriage wasn't commercially practical. Bobby, seeing that this is a goodbye occasion... Oh, Mrs. Rossman, your father wants to see you. He says he can't sleep. Thank you. I have to go now. Goodbye, Rams. Goodbye, Bobby. I did. But on my way down to the boat, I got to thinking. If any guy did what you did to keep two kids together, then nothing in the world has a right to keep us apart. Nobody has to try to bump themselves off for us. I'll find something. I got a new idea for that combination lock of mine. I'll work on it. If it's a flop, I'll try something else. If we can't get to the Philippines this year, we'll get there next. If we can't get there next year, what the heck? We're Saturday's children. We've a long way to go. We're young. And that's the best guarantee for the future. And don't give me any of that we're on a rock and it's raining business. It won't rain for a while yet. Oh, Bobby. I think you can tell him now. Tell me what? You'd better sit down, dear. No. Yes. <laughs> 